Hey guys, what's up? I am John Merritt from borntoproduce.com and welcome to this third video in this free bootcamp course for beginners. So here's a quick and easy way to get creative and original results using loops from sample packs. We're going to be using baseline loops for this tutorial and what we don't really want to happen in our tracks is that we create sort of boring, samey sounding baselines. Yes, if you're using loops, you could just use one loop from a sample pack, but it will never sound that original. And even with some good editing, you can only go so far. So I'm going to show you how to get a really good sound from using multiple baseline loops to create one unique and original baseline. And I'll also show you how easy it is to add in variation to your new baseline as your track progresses. So I'm going to use the drum loop that I made for the beat tracing tutorial, and I'm looking into get a fairly sort of gritty bass line going over the top. Of course, you may want to do this in house or dubstep or electro, whatever genre it is. But if you follow these steps, then you'll be able to get similar results in whatever genre that you want or using whatever sample CDs that you want. I'm going to be taking my samples from a Loop Master sample pack as that is the kind of grimy bass lines that I'm after for this track. But as I say, you can do this with a sample pack from any genre of music. So I've got my drum loop and now it's time to get my bass lines. So if you're looking for a way to find some free audio samples, you might want to go back and have a listen to our intro video, if you haven't already, for this bootcamp course, where Jay talks a bit about how to get some free samples. I'm going to go to my audio pool and click on import. And I'm going to be using a sample bank called Dark Dub by Loop Masters because it has the kind of grimy bass lines that I'm after for this track. So I'm just going to go through and audition some of these samples. I quite like the beginning of that one, so I'm just going to double click it and bring it into the projects. I'm just going to drag that up onto spare audio channel there. So Cubase again has just automatically time stretched that. So I'm just going to use the first note of this loop. So I'm just going to shorten this waveform, dragging in from the very bottom right hand corner. So I've only got one beat of that bass line. And there we go. You can hear what that sounds like. So that's just the first note. Now I want to get some more. So I'm going to go back to my audio pool, control P if you need to bring it up and click on import. And then I'm just going to continue auditioning some different bass lines. I quite like that, so I'm just going to double click it to bring it in and drag that up onto an empty space within the arrange window. And again, I'm just going to grab this little right hand control point just to bring it in because I don't want the whole sample there. I'm going to drag that across. So it's on the second beat there and just see what that sounds like. Now that actually sounds just a little bit out of time, even though Cubase has stretched that to the correct tempo. So what I'm going to do, it just sounds a bit funny. So sounds almost a bit slow. So what I'm going to do is actually time stretch this manually. So I'm going to go up here to where the object selection is. And if I click on the bottom right hand corner, brings up this little menu and I just want to click on sizing applies time stretch. So now if I drag the right hand in, it's actually, it's not going to shorten the waveform, it's actually going to time stretch it. So that's actually time stretched it, let's see what that sounds like. And that is much better, now it actually sounds like it's perfectly in time with the rest of the track. So let's go back and grab another loop to use. Let's try that one and just drag that up onto our audio track. Let's have a little listen to make sure it's okay. That's not too bad, perhaps just not that last little bit. So, again, just right click, select the split tool and cut that there. Delete the rest. Yeah. 
So what I'm going to do here is this feels like it should have just another little bit of bass line at the end there. So I'm going to copy that original bit from the or the first note of our bass line. And then again, holding Alt and Control, I'm just going to grab that waveform and move it along and see if we can't get it sounding a bit different. <laughs> Now let's just keep experimenting. And keep experimenting just until you get it to sound right. So that's not sounding too bad. Now what I want to do is just copy all of that across. So I literally select every single thing there that's in my arrangement window. Help sometimes if you change the quantize to one bar. So the snap is nice and obvious. And I'm just going to hold down Alt and copy all of that across. And I'm just going to move the loop region as well. So just grab that right hand point there and just drag it across so everything is looped again. And all I want to do here is just add a bit of variation. So I'm just going to mix up this second bar of bass line. <laughs> So we're going to go and just do some little creative editing. So I'm going to change the quantize again to 16th. And I'm just going to go in and edit this. So I'm just going to shorten it, turn it, bring in that right hand envelope a bit, copy that across. So we've got like a doubled up bit of bass there. And I'm just going to copy that across again. So we've got a double of that. And shorten this here. So we're just adding in a bit of variation using some very, very simple just editing techniques. It's quite easy to do. Just repeat that over again. I could delete that and copy that once again. Whatever you fancy, it's totally up to you. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to sort of add variation to different bass lines and show you some of the basic editing functions of Cubase. Okay, so again, there's another very simple but extremely powerful technique for getting not just using any old bass line from a sample pack, but how to use many different bass lines to come up with something that's really unique and original. So I hope that helps some of you. Now I'm going to hand over to Jay and he's going to show you how to use groups and how to set up sidechain in Cubase.